Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a good day. Do you have a classic car? Are you thinking of converting your classic car from petrol or diesel powered to electric power? Now, if you're thinking of doing that, I'm not going to show you how to do that, and I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'm not even going to go into the argument about whether you should do that or whether you shouldn't do that. I do believe fully it's personal choice. However, all the information that's out there available at the moment, whether you're phoning businesses and talking to them about it, or whether you're looking on the internet uh, and social media and seeing if there's any information on, uh, on there about how to go about changing a car from an internal combustion engine to an electric motor, whether it's worth doing or not, should you really do it, can you afford to do it, that's for other channels to talk about. The one thing that I'm thinking of at the moment is, if you're in the UK and you have a classic vehicle and it's over 40 years old, it is going to be registered as a historic vehicle, which means you no longer pay for tax, so you get your free road fund tax, and you get uh, it's MOT exempt. So legally, your classic car of historic status does not need an MOT. That puts it down to personal choice. Do you want to have your car MOT? Do you think it's a good idea to have your car MOT? Again, that's a personal choice for you. I'm not going to get into the debate about that whole thing. However, one of the things that has come out recently in the press if you've been reading around is the possibility of losing your historic vehicle status if your car is substantially modified. Now I had a quick look through the briefings of uh, a substantially modified vehicle and what counts as a substantial modification. One of the things that uh, is taken into account is a difference in brake horsepower output or a difference in the power of the engine that you're using to drive the vehicle. So I was just thinking if you're thinking of going ahead and swapping from internal combustion to electricity as a way of powering your classic car over here in the UK, are you going to put yourself at risk of losing your historic vehicle status? Will you then be charged your yearly road tax and will you have to go back and have the car MOT every single year? So I tried asking a few people, not many people seem to know, so I did the right thing and I got on the phone and I phoned the DVLA. No, no, that's fine. No, absolutely not. It's been great. Thank you. No, really helpful. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Well, that was interesting. A full 48 minutes waiting on the phone call for a five-minute call. However, I have found out the answer. So, if you have a classic car that's over 40 years old and currently registered as a historic vehicle and you then decide to future-proof your car and convert it to electric power. So you remove all of the internal combustion engine and you put a full electrically, electrically powered motor into the car to power the vehicle and drive the vehicle as normal. You will still retain your historic vehicle status. However, you will be required legally to have the car MOTs on a yearly basis. Now you need to inform the DVLA obviously that you've changed the power of the vehicle from petrol or diesel to electric. Now the way to do that, you need the logbook of your vehicle or the V5. So this is the logbook guys, um, you should have one something similar for your car or your vehicle. As you can see I've blacked out the address details and all the information of the car that this relates to. Um, it has been sold so this one has been destroyed, it's going in the bin. So I can use this to show you. Now the bit you need to fill in when you change everything on the car, if you open it up, it's this blue section here. Now this is the bit you need to fill in and you'd simply fill in any changes that you're putting in there. So 
whether you've changed the body type, the, obviously the VIN chassis number, that'll stay the same. Um, date of changes, you need to put the, the date of changes in. But the big thing you need to put in is the engine number. So you'll need to change the cylinder capacity. You'll also need to change the engine number because your electric motor will have a specific engine number relating to it. And I think that's about it. On the, over up here in the type of fuel, you know, you'll need to change the type of fuel from petrol or diesel to EV um, to electrically electric powered. I'm sure if there's any issues, if you have any issues with it, obviously go to your local post office, check with them. Or if you have the time to sit and wait on the phone like I did, you can phone the DVLA and ask them for assistance in filling it in. Now, I'm not recommending that you call the DVLA. Uh, obviously, they've got a, they're incredibly busy at the moment. There's a huge call queue trying to get a, re a response from them. And I don't want to impact on that and make their job any harder. So if you have any trouble filling the logbook in on the blue section, take it to the post office. I'm sure they'll be able to give you a hand with that. But that's all you need to do. Well, that was a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, it's not normal to get good news when you phone the DVLA about something, some form of legislation that they're putting through. But in a nutshell, if you do own a classic vehicle, whether it's powered by a petrol engine or a diesel engine, and you are considering converting it over to an electrically powered vehicle, you can do that. You will be able to retain your historic vehicle status, which means you'll still get your tax or vehicle excise duty exemption. So you'll still have your free road tax every year, but you will need to go back to having the car MOT'd on a yearly basis as you did do previously. Now, a quick question for all you fellas and fellarettes out there. Do you own a, current, a classic car currently? Are you considering changing from an internal combustion to electricity to run the car? Um, do you already own a classic car that has been converted from internal combustion to electricity. Would you consider buying one if it's already been converted? What's it like? Is it different? Or would you rather leave your classic car as original as it was when it first came out the factory showroom all those years ago and just keep it running and looking after it and enjoying it that way? Leave a comment, guys, girls, let us know. And if you enjoyed this video, give me the big thumbs up. That helps uh, the YouTube algorithm show it to all the other people that do need to see that in order to answer that burning question for them about whether you keep your historic status or not when you do the swap over, if you're considering doing the swap over. In the meantime, if you like internal combustion engines and you like classic cars, which let's face it, you're watching the channel, so you must do, you'd probably enjoy this video here. Lots of internal combustion power cars in there from a local cars and coffee that I run in the area. Uh, all the details will come up in those videos but so uh, that's it for this video i'm going to end it there thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one bye bye